Hello, I am Yuri Flair, better known as Luos. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to fade in a texture from bottom to top using a texture and without a texture, which saves texture draw and is generally more optimal. So first, let me import some textures. I'm going to grab a gradient. And I'm also going to import a random noise texture. Uh, there we go. I'm going to edit them as well. Let's start with the high end gradient. I zoomed in a little bit. I can zoom in even more so you can better see. Uh, let me show it a little bit here. As you can see, there's a little bit of coloration here, some artifacts. And this is because in the grayscale texture, when you have the compression settings to default, it tries to combine the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel together. And this gives some weird compression artifacts. Now, there's also an alpha channel, which is the R, G, and B channels combined. And it's generally a higher resolution but it can cost a little bit more but anyways if you change the compression settings from default to alpha because it's a grayscale texture then the artifacts are almost gone and the coloration is also gone it's definitely just a grayscale black white and anything in between without colors now the next thing i need to do is set a texture group and this is something important especially uh, Imagine you're playing a PC game and you can set the quality for the environment, the lighting, the effects all separately. Now, if you keep this texture world to group and you're using this for an effect, then when you set the world detail lower, it will also lower the effects because this texture is currently in the texture group world. Now, if you set it to effects and you change the world details to lower, the effects will still be higher quality. So now that we have the high end gradient for k thingy set up correctly, let's do the same with the noise mask. Compression settings go to alpha. And I'm going to show you once again the difference between alpha and default. You can see there's a little more jaggy lines and whatever. And back to alpha, it's way more cleaner. This also results that you can actually keep your general texture size a little bit smaller because it's a little bit better compressed. But for now, let's just do the regular. Texture size and the texture group should be effects. There we go. Save the both of them. And now let's go to the material. So the material is open. Let's drag and drop the textures into it. There we go. And I already set this to a translucent unlit shading model. And I should probably disable apply fogging as well. There we go. And we're going to use this texture as the emissive color and because it's a grayscale texture you don't need the rgb channel together you only need one channel not sure if that's actually a little bit better for performance um but i tend to use it like this here we go we can actually see the texture on this flat plane and we're going to use this texture as the opacity here we go and we're going to pan it from zero to one now if you hold down the u key and left mouse click you get a Texture coordinate node. And you can use a panner, but generally I just use an add. So I'm gonna add something to it. And plug it into the UVs. I need a uh, append. An append basically, uh, if you have like an R channel and you append, oh, append the red channel and the green channel, you actually have a new red green channel if you append it one more time. You get the red, green, and blue channel together. You can also mix and match. Mix and match. Oh my god, my English. Mix this up and get other results. But for now, we only need the append for something else. There. At the moment, if I add, actually add a like a time, I'm going to use a debug time sign. You can see what's going on in this text. Actually, you might not actually see it in this texture. But let's. Plug it into that one so you can see it's going moving up and down and left and right at the same time. Or, to, or diagonal, of course. But we don't really want that. So I'm actually going to append it. The debug time sign with the blue channel. And add a zero value to the other one. So the first channel, the red channel, the U is not doing anything now. And the V channel is now moving up and down. But as you can see, it's repeating over and over again. You can see that when previewing. Now we don't want that. And an easy way to do that is actually set a, a sampler source to clamp. 
Now on AMD uh, hardware, uh, especially GPUs, this using the shared is actually a little bit cheaper. So if you can, try and set the texture samples to something else than from texture asset like wrap or clamp. If it's wrapping, then obviously it keeps tiling. And if it's clamped, then the last line of pixels at the top or the bottom or left or right will repeat over and over again. So in this case, I want this texture to also be either wrapped or clamped. It doesn't really matter. We can actually do wrap for now. And if I stop previewing this one, you can see that the texture is now fading in. Though it needs to fade in a little bit better. And for that, I generally use a lerp. Which can go from minus one to one, and that way you can probably see it fade in and fade out. I'm also going to preview this one again so you can see it going from full black to full white. Now, the thing is, if you want to also fade it out again from the going the same way, then you need to duplicate the texture sample or use a one minus and offset it, whatever, whatever. That's quite annoying. So I'm going to keep this and I'm actually going to go over to the math version of this, which is a little bit more complicated, but it's a little bit cheaper. So here we go. For now, I'm going to remove this part altogether. I'm going to move it here in case I ever need it again. And let's get a texture coordinate again. Hold down the U key, left mouse click, and there you have your texture coordinate node. Now we need an add. If you hold down the left, hold down the A key and then left click, you get an add. And if you hold down the L key and left mouse click, you get a lerp. And uh, there is also one for the component mask, but I keep forgetting it. It's like shift G, I think, or shift. I keep forgetting. So let's just do a component mask. There we go. And this is the base for things that we need. We also need that debug time sign, so we can just copy and paste it here. And let's set it up. Now, this is the texture corner node. It's a grayscale horizontal and a grayscale vertical channel, and combined you see a red and green. So let's plug that into the add. There we go. And let's get another lerp that's minus one to one. And since the debug time sign is already connected to it, if you preview it, you can see it going from black to white. Now let's add that to the texture corner node and preview it. As you can see, it's moving both the red and the green channel. And now let's mask that because we only need the green channel. And if you preview that, you can see that we also have like a grayscale texture. And the advantage of the texture corner node is that it's totally uncompressed. So it's very clean. Even if you zoom in quite a bit, there's, there aren't any artifacts. And that makes it quite clean and nice. But now we have this, but uh, what else can we do to this? Well, we can first off preview it in the opacity, of course. Now it's going from the bottom to the top. If you want to invert that, you can just use a 1 minus. So holding down the O key on the keyboard, left mouse click. and then. Uh, Plug it in here and come from the other way around, I think. There we go. All right. But what if we want to fade it out and fade it in again? Uh, we can do something about that. I'm going to actually grab another add. A, T, left mouse click. Plug it into the texture corner node. There we go. And then I'm going to need another add. Uh, there. And I'm actually going to copy this, Control C, and I click where I want to place them, Control V. Drag them out a little bit and plug that in. And in the preview, still the same thing, of course. So, what else do we need now? We need a 1 minus. Actually, let's do the component mask first so we can actually see what's going on. Moving from white, and the black comes from the top. And if I want to invert that, I can use the one minus. And preview that. That's black and the white comes from the top. I'm actually going to move everything a little bit to the left. There. Now, how can I combine this? Well, simple, with a multiply. I can actually do the multiply before the component mask, but for now, this is fine. I can clean it up a little bit later. And if I preview this now, you can see that there's actually a white line coming. 
and that's quite nice but what if we want this to have a little bit bigger or whatever well we can always change that a little bit so previewing as you can see now the texture is now nicely moving in fading in and fading out you can try removing the component masks and then only place one at the end and plug that into the opacity it saves you a component mask so that's nice there now but what if you want that line to be a little bit bigger you can use this add and use a negative value let's say minus 0.5 and if you preview that again you have a much bigger line but as you can see it is not totally fading at the bottom and that's because this lerp needs a small change if you add a negative value to add you actually have to add a positive value to the constant b in most cases so let's do 1.5 and now it should fade in and fade out again stop previewing and the texture goes in from bottom to top and this is quite cool because if you add like a panner or whatever to that other texture sample and you can actually do some quite some cool stuff there and this is based for a lot of effects that kind of thing so i think this is, might help you can also tweak the texture coordinate node to set the, uh, the v tiling to something else like two and then the result will be something like this let's play around with it like 0 to 5 obviously you need, will need to change the lerp values to make sure that it stops just below and above that uv map but this is a good thing to play around with and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it all right i think that's it for now hope you learned something take care and have a good week be productive yo